future is bright. We are together, together we stand. Our children, our future for woman and man. Young and proud in West Africa. Lucky to live in Liberia. Care for our children, care for our land. We are together, together we stand. Liberia. Beautiful country, she's been blessed by heavens above us and we'll do our best. We want your freedom, we want your peace, to live together in harmony. We will forgive but never forget, look to the future without regret. Let's push on forward, let's push on through, the worst is behind us and look to the new life. Precious to Dr. Like Precious to uh, here in the United Kingdom, based in London. Today we will hear uh, all the introduction about her, and she will tell her tell us later about herself. Welcome to the Max K talk show here. It's a pleasure. 
pleasure to be here as well. Today is Monday. And of course, a bank holiday or national holiday here in the UK. Let's all say good afternoon to all of you. From where I sit and broadcast. Just almost there. Just almost 2 o'clock. And of course, at 2 p.m. this afternoon. We play host to Dr. Precious Toe. We have a whole lot to discuss as well about her charity work. Why she decided to do the charity work. Which charity is they? And of course, uh, the, the recent uh, uh, event she organized. Talk about that. Say, Welcome to the show. Say, Say, Any moment from now, we'll be getting her live uh, via a video. Uh, for those of you that are watching via, via the video, you'll be able to also see her. Welcome all of you and thank you for joining in. Uh, please also also uh, share with somebody on your page. Yeah? So any moment from now, uh, uh, we just waiting to get a call from Dr. Precious Toe and then we'll keep, we'll keep the ball rolling. So just stick and stay with me as we continue here with Steve Crown. You are great. for your call from our studio guest uh, Dr. Precious too and we'll be taking her live for you <laughs> all right uh, like I say we're just waiting for the call from uh, Dr. Precious too uh, once we get her call, we will take her on and, and she will be our studio guest uh, this afternoon. Uh, so let's continue here. Uh, let's take this one from uh, Sima and Flavor. No one like you.
for the call from our studio guests uh, it's five minutes past the hour already uh, we're waiting for a call uh, once we get her call then we uh, we start the show Backstage Talk Show, and we're here this Monday, uh, beautiful Monday afternoon. Uh, of course, um, beautiful Monday evening to you, or Monday night. Okay, uh, welcome. All right, let's go to our studio guest. Uh, she's here already, um, Dr. Precious Do. Precious Do, uh, good evening. Good, uh, good afternoon. How are you doing? Afternoon. I hope I'll, I'll, I hope uh, let's let's hope the internet will help us uh, get in some uh, kind of a full connection. Yes. Uh, how are you doing? Doing 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 today. I'm great, and you? Yeah, I'm very well. Thank you as well. I'm very good. Thank you for asking as well. <laughs> it's great to see you. Uh, been up well. It's been a little while, but it's good to see you live with us today. Amen. They're tired. Well, yeah, it's part of it, isn't it? So, yeah, it's, it's so great. I, I keep um, following some of the some of the development that went on during the weekend, but uh, it's it's so so great. Anyway, that um, let's keep the ball rolling. Uh, for, because of time, let's see, let's hear from you, especially for the benefit of those that list that will be hearing you or seeing you. Those are watching live, seeing you for the first time. Uh, let's hear from you. 
Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, and then we want to know uh, who is this, uh, this particular uh, guest to us. Oh, well, I'm Liberian and my name is Precious, Dr. Precious Toe. Soon became Reverend like on Saturday. And um, a gospel artist, a mother, um, advocate for women's rights. You go on. Just here to serve my people. That's who I am. Well, it's great. It's great to hear that. Here to serve your people. That's great. Um, but let's 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 keep the ball. Let's um set the same fire for our listening audience, especially uh, for many, many, many who are joining in now will be uh, seeing uh, Dr. Precious for the first time and also hearing her voice uh, for the first time. Um, let's let's start it this way in terms of uh, your connection as a librarian. You live now in the United Kingdom. You've been here for a little while or so. But first of all, let's um, let's go back a little bit. You in the music as well. But let's go back a little bit in term, in terms of your um, your your upbringing and uh, those memories. Uh, whether you grew up in Liberia or you grew up in 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 in, in, in Lagos, whether you grew up in Kenya or so. How? <laughs> How how was how how was it? What 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 is it that you can remember? You can share with us if you ever grew up, especially if you have a small taste of Liberia before migrating. How was how was it? Well, I grew up in Liberia, born in Liberia, full time. Sorry about my voice is a bit cracky because I'm still tired, Max. And um, born in Liberia, grew up in Liberia until the war came, and then migrated to Ghana, and then here I am in the UK today. So. Bonifa Centifa Liberian. Wow. Okay, born in Liberia, grew up in Liberia, migrated, and then well, now um in terms of um um let me see, let me let me just bring in the Christmas uh, festivity in Liberia because uh, where you are is quite different on Christmas Day is different, very, very different. I've seen it, I've, I've witnessed it also. But uh, what are the memories that you can share with us that maybe like Christmas Day, how was Christmas Day um, like in your household? How how do you how, how was the celebration like? Oh, that was good. Good memory. You can um, you killed in goats. You don't have to go and buy it like proper. It's already made. You just do it in your house. The chicken, everything is fresh in Africa. The fruits are hanging over your head. You know, you can walk into the banana plantation. You can just pick something out of there when it's ready. You get a gobble tree, the plum tree, you know. Those are days we really long to get back, you know. Mm. And it was a beautiful Christmas every year. We look forward to Christmas. Even though you get the chicken leg, you don't get the best part of the chicken most of the time. <laughs> but it was always awesome and joyous because you have the families around and everybody's coming together just for that time to celebrate each other. And that was awesome. Mm. Yeah, is there is there any difference? Uh, that perhaps you can share with us any difference with uh, as compared to where you are now, um, Christmas back home and Christmas here. Difference. We in <laughs> London, right? Um, on Christmas, everybody mind their business. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we don't have transportation, so if you can't drive, you stay in your house with your little family and you you enjoy with them in your home. Whereas then. Africa, you will walk to somebody's house, even if it's one hour, you will walk there. But where we are, you don't just walk to anybody's house without prior arrangement, prior engagements, or appointments being made. You have to really, really stay in your home and you and your children in your little place. I'm sorry for you if you're just a, someone that is by yourself. You will be lonely and you would, even, you would not even like to have Christmas anymore. So it's a big difference from Africa to London. But you just make do with what you've got, isn't it? That's what life is about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, let me make correction here to our uh, wonderful uh, uh, brother who is watching. Her name, her last name is T, T for Tango, O-E, not D for Delta. It's T for Tango, O-E. Um, so just in case if you want to okay. correct that. Now, um, you... In your introduction, you say you are, you know, a musician, gospel musician. I know, in fact, I got some of your tracks that I have before the end of the show. We will play some some of the tracks as well. 
uh, for our listening audience, especially for those that, that hearing you, hearing your voice for the for the first time and seeing you as well. In terms of music, um, you say you in, you you into gospel music and also you 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 writing or whatsoever. How did it come about? I mean, did you just start at a very very early age, maybe you know five years, two years old, so singing in the, in the in the in the kitchen along with mommy, or how how did you how did you, how did it all start? No, actually singing in the back room with daddy. <laughs> but my dad loved music. When he was alive, he was always playing all kinds of music. He never had a favorite song, by the way, or a favorite um, type of music, whether it's circular music, gospel music, whatever it is, he had it in the house, and he was always playing it. So I grew up around music, dancing and singing. But then I particularly was interested in gospel music because I loved the way the church across the river from my house in Grand Bassa, the way they used to dance and play the tambourines and all the natural things they used to play and the way they would be dancing, the dust would be coming off their faces. That's about a different here. To to things together in my little book. Because my mom always say, you write things that come to your mind down and you, you refer to them later for like a precedence or something. So I used to do that at any age, writing things and jotting things. Some of them never made sense, whatever I was doing. But I knew I was writing something anyway. And I just used to love singing all over the place. And when people are doing events and I would just rush in and start singing with the band and they'll be pushing me away. And that's how I started. But it became like a, a joy, a joyous thing to do. It gives me this satisfaction, and it's it, it just like I lose myself in the moment when I'm doing that. And it's like mm. a different person together, and, and that's how I came about. Mm. I, I mean, what, what, was there any time that you actually discovered yourself, or it was somebody who discovered you who said, oh, you can sing also? Did you, in a, <laughs> I mean, did, did you discover, discover yourself? Well, you have to believe in yourself sometimes. But you have to be in the right environment in order to hear the right things to believe in yourself. So, well, the choir become director, music, and all of that. I never thought of one thing releasing a CD or an album because it is not what was taught to us in the church anyway, like produce a CD. But then you have music ministers that came to minister at occasions in the churches. And then one day, one of them said to me, Have you thought of? releasing yourself and launching yourself out into the open and i thought mm -mm, we can't do that those kind of things are for rich people you know how much would it take me to produce a cd or talk less of a video and then i say i'm doing a, a launching those things will cost me a lot and then he had to talk me through the process that you don't have to have million to do something once you have the zeal and the passion just start once you start you will have people that will come and help you and that's what i did mm -hmm. that's what i did yes all right, uh, viewer and listeners, uh, she's uh, Dr. Precious Theroux. She's uh, a wonderful, wonderful uh, studio guest today on the Max K Talk Show. I mean, they, uh, uh, we're trying to get up um, to, to know more about her before uh, as we go along on the show. But but let's talk a little bit because you, you are deeply in the church here. You're serving, you stay singing, you stay writing, and whatsoever. Um, is there any... Have you noticed any difference in terms of worship uh, from the church you grew up in, Liberia, or you started uh, to that of here, even in churches that you visit sometimes? <laughs> the big difference. When I was growing up in Liberia, I was younger. I was in my age, so you can start coming every day. <laughs> so, it, was, it was pure. In Africa, it was pure. You would just go in and just worship and love it. Celebrate each other at that time. You could see the joy in the in, in the eyes of the worshippers, the minister, the pastor, the zeal to even come to the house of God. Well, we're in a, a diaspora where people are busy working. Maybe some people work seven days a week, and it's like going to church is war. You have to beg people to go to church, and I think um, people need to understand why they are going in the first place, what they're going for. And going to church is not about the, the pastor or the deacon or the 
the reverend or whatever who is in charge. Yes, you're going to honor them. That's understandable. But you're not going there for them. So you need to choose what suits you so that you'll be consistent in that thing you're doing. Because mm -hmm. I think consistency in the church, of course, is, is difficult these days. And it's not happening the way it used to be. Where in Africa, you have a Wednesday service that the whole place will be full. And people don't even have nowhere to pass. Mm -hmm. But here in the Wednesday service, you will see 10 people, 20 people. Depends on the church as well. And depends on um, you know, um, who is doing the service on the day. These days. And not who is preaching today will make me go to church. Who is um, praise and worshiping today, leading the praise and worship team. That's the reason why I'm going to go to church. So people go to church for different reasons these days, and it's not what it used to be back in the days when we were growing up as young people enjoying the services. Even when you pass by a church in Africa, you want to just stop and dance with them because they're doing something great, you know? So that's my take on it, and that's what I have noticed and believe is happening these days. Okay. Now, now, now uh, normally uh, when I have a gospel musician here, I, I normally do ask them whether... Uh, the music they sing is um, uh, is also the form of preaching. Um, do you also consider that? Well, um, musicians, are, um, we're, art we're artists, right? We create the song. And your song is supposed to come from the Bible, so whoever listens to it, music is a spirit. And the words that we speak to are spirit. So whoever saw that word is going into is meant to do something to them so more or less yeah they're, we are preachers not more or less we are preachers as well but in songs so the bible says edify each other in hymns and psalms so i can't use my 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 terrible words to make you happy what i'm going to just make you miserable so we're using this the bible to write the songs and we're not using our personal feeling to say oh um when i write they're jealous so i'm rising no you don't want to sing at people but you want to sink in the spirit of the persons you're ministering to. So you're writing songs that will touch their hearts. That's why we still sing the old songs. No matter what we do these days, the old songs are being sung. And whenever you listen to the songs in certain situations in your life, you can see what it does to you. It brings out a different vibe and it lifts your spirit up. It depends on the mood you were in when you started to play that song. So of course, gospel artists are preachers. In songs, they are giving you a, a spiritual aspect of something that it will kick you, take you to the throne of God and take you to where you need to be in the spiritual realm. Okay. All right, as we go along, let me quickly take this one from our brother Samuel uh, Adewoli. Uh, Dr. Precious Stowe, even though you are a gospel singer, would you consider, would you consider, uh, would you consider to do or get involved in a secular music project? I think somebody will hire you now. <laughs> um, secular, no. When I started this journey, I had um, some companies that wanted to sign me on, and it was to do with secular music. But I know where God took me from, so, and I didn't get into it for the money. Yes, those things fall in place, but I'm seeking it first. So, mm -hmm. it depends on what you want. I can help you do something, but I can't do secular music. Uh, mm -hmm. I can I can connect you with people because that's what I do. But I cannot do secular music. I'm sorry. You're not. You're not thinking about that in the future. No, I had. I had great offers. I have great companies that wanted to sign me on. If I changed my mind, and trust me, if I had done that today, it would be a different story. But I'm sold out for Christ. Right. All right. Uh, another follow-up question. Can you tell us how you are inspired to write song uh, as a songwriter? The Bible says, um, in our dreams and in our sleeps, he gives us visions. And um, we are meant to be prompt in the spirit. And we're meant to be able to release and let ourselves be to hear from God. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I just, in my house, and I'm reading the Bible, and I'm worshiping, and I get these melodies in my head, and I take my phone right away, and I begin to recall the melody that is in my head. And when I get to the studio... Uh, I thank God I have someone that is spiritual as well. So when I get to the studio, we begin to put things in place. And then you can understand that what God gave you is just the body of the song. And then when you enter wherever you need to enter, he gives you the full song. But there's always a time that you have to listen to the spirit of God. 
it's not you listening to the beat and putting the, the words to the beat because you want people to buy the beat to the song. That's why you see someone like Zinash can sing and you people can buy the song because she listened to the Spirit of God and write her song. So when you, when you listen to the song she's singing, you're able to go back and listen to it more and more. And you sing it in churches because what we artists need to do is listen to the Spirit of God, not to just go and produce anything quick, 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 and release quick, 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 quick. You need to be able to go through the Word of God and listen to the Spirit of God inside of you. And when you decide to produce something, it will be in line with what God wants, and it will be in the season as well. Because when you release that song, people will want to listen to it. People will want to, they will take it to places that you didn't expect it to be because you waited. Mm. All right, just before we take our first break, let's let's end up with this and we'll come on to the charity, uh, charitable work you are doing. But um, nowadays, um, uh, Dr. To, um the churches today, um, we are growing every day in terms of uh, denominations coming or either people establishing uh, different, different, you know, churches or reformed churches or so, um, which of course is, um, is, is welcoming. But um, at the same time today, that the precious store, which of course, maybe I will just want your advice as well to our, our people. Um, this, this, this thing that going around the pursuit of miracle, a lot of people running after a miracle. Uh, they want uh, maybe their children to either travel or they want their children to have a good job. And so they chase men of God for a woman of God for a miracle. And some people even go as far as paying for miracles. So um, what, is your, what is your concern about uh, these churches of today, especially uh, preachers of, of, of the gospel? Uh, what is your concern and what best advice you can give us today? I, I believe in uh, sowing a seed and I believe in speaking into what you want because the Bible rightfully says the work that Jesus do, you will do greater works. I think you can't be into the house of God and be chasing after miracles. The miracle is meant to chase you. And if you're paying for a miracle, you need to know that that position or where you are is not genuine. Because uh, the Bible said in the last day, men will be seeking after those things, you know, uh, Matt. and men will be lovers of themselves. The, the love of God will wash cold inside of them. So you will have false prophets standing up in the days like these and saying to people, bring 500 pounds, your auntie and your uncle is killing you. No, I believe spoken words are powerful. When we were growing up, there were words that were spoken in our lives that were not proper and that was not good. That's what the Bible said when you become in Christ, all things are passed away and you are new. And when you are new, well, I think we're having some internet problem there. Um, I don't know whether it's um, from Dr. Two herself or also. If you're having some internet problem, I inter been interrupted here uh, on the Matsuki talk show. Uh, let me say welcome. Um, a lot of person share this thing, uh, this video so far. Uh, this is not fair. When you sit down, especially when we're discussing something like that, we're talking about God and everything. I mean, I've, 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 I think people should share. Yeah, I mean, now. Uh, mm. All right, okay, uh, we just lost Dr. Two. Let's see whether we can, uh, we can, uh, we can play one of, play one of our tracks as promised. As promised, uh, uh, here. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see.
Okay, we're still trying to be reconnected with uh, Dr. Precious Stu, uh, who, of course, is our studio guest this afternoon on the Max K Talk Show. Uh, welcome back. Uh, uh, we're here, and of course, we're here to. We're here to. Uh, All right, uh, welcome back. We're still trying to get uh, Dr. Precious to back on. I don't know uh, uh, what happened. Uh, we just lost her. Uh, we just lost her on on the platform. Let's hope she's going to call back so uh, we can continue on here. Let's continue with uh, some, of, uh, uh, some of her tracks here, which we already queued uh, for this show. <laughs> Guys, uh, we can understand because uh, every two minutes and things, the kind of call, a call gotta come in, and you know, a pastor calling or a member calling, they want to know where she is, or so so. She's very very busy. We can hear. Yeah, okay, all right. Uh, um, uh, uh, let, me, let me quickly take this before uh, we go further. Um, uh, Dr. Precious, uh, the one for Delany Madu, she says, uh, Dr. Precious is now ordained as a reverend. Can she tell us what we can ex uh, we can expect from her? <laughs> I think she's already into she already into charity work. <laughs> Are you a dean? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I, and, you, didn't, um, you didn't tell me. I, I, I should have added the two titles: Reverend Doctor Precious Stowe. Don't worry about the title. Just call me wherever, as long as it's not insulting me. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Oh. 
the title can be there, but we just have to do the work of God. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And I'm um, sorry. About <laughs> no, it's okay. Uh, we, we understand, actually, in terms of, uh, especially when you're on live, that it call, one course comes in, you can, you can, you can interrupt. But uh, let's go now. Let's go uh, to the humanitarian work you're doing. Um, we understand uh, uh, you, you actually um, uh, established an NGO that's supposed to be working along with a, a certain group of, uh, of, 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 of the society, uh, whether it's in here in the UK or across Africa. So, okay, what is it that you, you're working on? Well, our, our NGO is to do with um, process of albinism. Well, we're trying to um, get it in, integrated in the society, really. And we thank God it's the 21st century and they're speaking up for themselves and they're in the front foot for their own lives. And they're saying to people, no more stigmatization, no more killing us or no more calling our names. We belong here and we are here to stay. And we're looking for them to be taking places in the government, taking high seats and where they can education-wise, yeah, to be on top of everything that they're doing. So we, we're just thanking God for the great things he's doing in their lives. It hasn't been easy because there's one trouble from here to there, especially when it's to do with a place in Africa where people want something in order to give you what you're doing from your heart and passionately. So mm -hmm. the challenges get bigger, but we can overcome any hurdles as long as we stay focused. And so we, can, we say to people, we are open for donations, we are open for help, sun creams, hats, like we can send them to Liberia, we can ship them to Zimbabwe, Uganda, just for them to be able to get protected, be able to walk in the sun and do things. For the everyday life, they're not begging for money, but they just want to be able to survive certain things they're going through right now. So we're into developing families uh, of persons of albinism, give them the skills that they need to be able to take care of their family. So you're not giving somebody fish, but you're helping them to fish to be able to long-term sustain themselves, not to just be dependable and reliable on anybody, but independent and be able to do stuff for they and their families and to be able to move on in life instead of somebody just feeding them in their one place. So that's our aim and that's our goal. And we, we are almost getting there. We won't okay. be there fully. Every day is a progress, yeah. Uh, remind, uh, just in case, remind us of the name of the organization again. Stand up, stand out, Foundation. Okay, stand up, stand out. Okay, uh, in terms of uh, because all, all, something like this, you know, uh, there must be a reason behind it, or maybe you just want to do it because perhaps somebody is not doing it. Why, why they stand up, stand out organization? Why, why do you decide to go to that to that side? Well, I have a, a daughter. I've got four children, but I have one. I have two children that have the condition albinism, the rare condition. And well, at the beginning, I didn't understand this. So the family I, I was married to, they didn't understand it either. And my ex-husband didn't understand it either because it was like, oh my God, she gave birth to a white child and we're married. Uh, she must have had sex with a white man. You know, the story goes on and the list goes on and the name callings and People came to see this white baby that I have with this blonde hair, blue eyes in the hospital. And it was like a non-stop visit. And I realized that that was the beginning of something that I did not understand. That was bigger than me at the time. <laughs> so I needed to go through some series of depression and life issues. And yet I'm in a civilized environment and I was not told what the condition was about and why I had a child like that until the child was almost one year and I thought I need to snap out of this nonsense I was going through and all these words and things I was hearing and go and find out why I have a child like that. And when I got to the hospital, I was told that my husband and I had the genes. We have the genes and there's 25% chance in every pregnancy that the child will become, I mean, we, we have the condition, I've been the same. So when I found out that I had to research and I realized that if I, in this part of the world, was going through that stigma and that kind of comments. I would walk in the street and people would say things that you cannot even bear to, 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 to say out. And I realized that how many people like me that are going through that? How many women that have husbands that wants to leave because they have a white child? Let's put it that way. And those in Africa, how are they coping with the children if I have to go through a series of tests 
with my children, eye tests, skin tests, and all of those things. And it's free for them, and they have the ability to have every services that they need, glasses, sun cream, everything is prescribed to them free. So then I thought, wow, somebody is suffering somewhere in Africa, and they might need help as well. So where better can you go on to, like, your home? First and foremost, I'm a Liberian before I became British citizen. So it's good to go back to your country and help out where you can, best way you can. And that's how I went back to Liberia and decided to work with uh, UTAN, uh, Valami, and the rest and see how best we can rise up and do something for those that are going through worse situation than I was going through. And that's how come it came about. Is it really, um, in terms of challenges or so, I mean, is that something that they are facing challenges where they are? Well, I used to think Liberia was okay because I, ha I have friends for, from Tanzania, Zimbabwe, and South Africa, and the things that they say, that they are, they are persons of albinism, they, 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 the magnitude of what is spoken about is something that you can't even begin to say on that live TV or live interviews. But then when I met those in Liberia, they are okay in a way, but if you have other people that are suppressing them and not helping them to rise to where they need to rise to, and their eyesight are getting bad, their condition of, of living is not good, and then you're wondering, yes, we're in a civilized uh, 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 situation, why are people not looking? But the Liberian government is giving funds for these people to be taken care of. Now the question is, what are the funds being used by, by the organization that is on ground? Because they do have an organization that is actually meant to be catering for persons with albinism. Mm. And so if the majority of them are not being benefiting from it, then there's a question that needs to be raised. What is happening with the money that has been given? Because from my understanding, the government is doing something. They're giving a huge amount of money that these people are meant to be in school, they're meant to be well-educated, they're meant to be taken care of. Teachers need to be trained how to deal with persons with urbanism. And I don't think it should be used for personal gain and personal purpose. Or people should be driving big, big cars when the needs of the money is there. So the money is not being used for the purpose in which it is given for. I care less what somebody said because I have sat back and I've actually watched. I'm someone that don't speak until I know what is actually happening. Mm -hmm. And I've sat back and I heard what they said when I came the first time. And I told you I wouldn't say nothing because we're not there to stir up trouble. We are there to bring out the best in each and every one of us to do the right thing. But I realized that persons of happiness is being used to get those funds, but the funds are not being used for the purpose of which it is being used for. And last time I saw them demonstrating, there's no reason to demonstrate. Somebody's giving you about 10,000 US dollars. I think that's enough to put half of the persons of happiness in school. Secondly, to equip the environment they're in, to give them the right outlet, like, a, the artists, you should have people like standing voices in Liberia right now helping to establish an art clinic where persons with albinism will go to. You will not have someone like Utan in America right now going blind and going through surgery, going through pain. You will not have someone like uh, Valamy going to Germany to get eye surgery and things based upon the charity that they have been connected to. I think that the money has been given to these people, but they're not doing the right thing for it. They're developing themselves and using few persons with albinism and using the money to shut them up to fight the other group. I think they should be in unity and harmony together to sort out the things that is happening around the person with albinism. Going into these villages, not just giving them rice and clothes, but helping the families to rise from the dust they are in. To be able to farm or something, if the mother can sow, give them some of the money the government is giving you so they can go and sow. And then when they're sewing, people will buy the clothes they have. They can send these children to school. They will not be in the sun selling cold water or selling food. Or if they have a market as aspiration, build them a little hut where the sun will not burn their skin. I'm sure Max, that's not going to take $100 or $200 US to do that. And I applaud the government because they are giving the funds. When I spoke to the vice president, yes, the funds been given to the, the body on ground right now, the Liberian Abinity Association. But what are they doing with the money? I single-handedly do what I'm doing, but I cannot establish fully because I'm not on ground. But I can send money for them to do the little that they're doing, going to the villages, giving them sun cream, helping the family to sort out schools and things. But we need the one on ground that is actually getting the money from the government to do what they say they will do. And that's mm -hmm. where action is taking place and people need to speak out. 
because mm -hmm. a fear cannot do nothing for none of us. The money is being given to them, not for their purpose, for the purpose of the persons of Abinism. And it's a shame that it's not been done that way. Mm -hmm. And that's when I realized that today is the first time you heard me speak like this. It's because I've done my research and the money is being given. Wow. You know, Bob, I know extensively you've been, um, you've been working with, other organ uh, 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 with similar organizations but in other countries, including Ghana. And I have been following uh, uh, developments within, uh, as far as the, uh, these uh, initiatives are concerned. Even in Tanzania, uh, uh, in Canada, I, I have friends there that work with uh, uh, persons with abinism. Um, in Tanzania, the government, the people are, I mean, the organization fought it hard to the extent that uh, the government um, lawmakers do know about them now. And there's a law that is now being enforced. In Ghana, it's the same thing. Um, let me take you back to your own country, Liberia. Um, is there anything in place where lawmakers are actually, uh, where we have something on the book for the protection of uh, a person with abilities in Liberia? No. Um, from my knowledge, from when I spoke to the representative, House of Representatives when they came, they don't even have a clue because what they're saying to me is, <laughs> We, um, we haven't even sorted out the education system, talk less of disability aspect of things. So my question to them was, in the United Kingdom, we have 8,000 laws that are defaulted that we are not using anymore. And every, every two to three years or every year or six months, something new comes about and the, and, the, and the law has to be put in place and something has to be amended. So how many laws have you got in the book that is not working that you've taken out? that you need to now sit on the table and get people to come together and say this and that. So for one, disability uh, is one thing that we don't have no issues about, no establishment about yet. Talk less of thinking about a person with abilities and that their vision impairment is the severe disability, which is invisible disability they have. Talk less of you seeing the visible one, which is their skin uh, color. So what they're saying to me is they don't have the funds and the resources to put that in place right now. Mm -hmm. And I, I said, but you need to look into it because a country without uh, um, inclusion is going nowhere as well because you're not including them. You, that means you're not expecting them to advance to nothing. How much more people in wheelchairs? How much more people with sickle cell? How much more with someone with uh, autism or something like that? So it's a big role, and that's where my aim is. And I said to them, we want to incorporate abinism into the education system so that people will learn about it for the younger generations that are coming up. So I'm in contact with the educational minister to go back and to be able to do some and drafting some few things to put together to see if they can actually put it in the science curriculum. Because it's biology, really. The genes and all the cells and all of that is to do with biology. If the children understand that this person next to me is just because of this gene she became to look like this, yeah. They will accept what they did not understand. It is not easy for people to understand what they don't know. So the awareness is there in their learning. And then we have a better generation coming up together with children that are growing together in one classroom and not seeing the other one as a witchcraft or uh, some kind of name to call them. And that's the role we're on. Zimbabwe is awesome. That is being incorporated in the education system. Tanzania has been done by Standing Voices um, and Under the Sun. They've done that and they have a series of and programs that they do as well. And that's what I'm saying. If we have a Liberian Abinus Association on ground, these are things that we should be discussing to implement in the education system. It's not hard. Things are meant to be changed and things are meant to be put in place. And these are things that we need to sort out in our country for mm -hmm. Liberia to rise back on the map. Like, I went to the House of Parliament and I was talking about, they were talking about student exchange. House, of, with the House of Parliament in the UK. Yes, and I, I was talking about Liberia because, you know, until now, I didn't know much about my own country. I told you, it's something she to where you came from. Mm -hmm. And she said, you're not part of the Commonwealth. And that slapped me in the face because I was, they were ready to come and help the persons of Albinism, bring some of them abroad to go to school. And I'm so excited. And I go mm -hmm. with this big puzzle and with, with, with majority of the women leaders. And then I went there. I was the only one that did not get what I went for because we were not part of the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. And I was helping other people, which I'm still doing, but Liberia is my country. I can't have the voice in the diaspora and I have nothing to show when I go back to Liberia. Yeah. And it's sad. I don't know 
we need to think about this while we know we need to really think about no we're not colonized by them mm -hmm. but how can we go back into this space our yeah. people need this support and help and that was a dead end for me but all hope is not lost i'm still fighting yeah yeah i remember i attending the um the commonwealth youth conference uh, last year and uh, uh went there um and then I, I posed the question to one of the executive director, uh, direct government representative. I said, um, "Is there any any any, any possibility that um, uh, if we can if we we can model and also borrow you guys and be able to exchange in the future if we have certain things that they in Liberia?" Um, the first question they asked me whether we are part of Commonwealth. I told him, "I said no, we are not." And he said, "Well, it, it might be a bit difficult. We can." We can only be uh, work on a professional level, you know, and thing. But um, in terms of direct support from us, like we support other organizations, uh, uh, other uh, youth parliaments across uh, Commonwealth countries, we won't be able to, you know, do like that. Maybe, you know, if you say um, we are undertaking trainings or we can do some little bit of exchange, but we don't do too much, that can oh. be okay. I say, oh, okay. Um, but but that that's that that's the reality of it. But let's take a short break. When we come back, uh, I see a couple of questions um, as well, so you can be able to address the questions. And I got something as well to share uh, on the platform uh, that I just took from uh, an organization with respect to this uh, subject. Then before we can close out with, on the uh, on the recent event you had in the city of London. Let's take this short break. Uh, this one too is from our guest, Doctor. Precious too. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. All right, that's uh, our guest, uh, wonderful guest, uh, especially if you don't know her. Uh, she's the one that uh, voice you are hearing, so, ah, uh, well, I love that. All right, welcome <laughs> back. Let's see whether we can take a couple of concerns or comments here. Uh, all of this, okay, this one from Jus Josefa Toner. All of this is about political will. It's very down about abidism issues, so there is nothing can be done if we will not work on political will things cannot work uh well i mean that's it the political will not is as well uh this issue of uh, us being part of a member of certain uh, body as well okay when you talk about politics you touch politician and without them nothing can be done okay okay let's this is samuel um i think the liberian government should she uh, devised inclusion policy for the Abinos and people with disabilities and challenges. They should be incorporated into all areas of the society by implementing the inclusion policy. Uh, Thank you. Samuel says, Dr. Precious Sto, how can you protect their funds from the hands of people abusing their finances? I think that's the time we're talking about the money business. Yeah, and it, well, like uh, when Jupiter was talking to me, he said you need to be on ground, and um, and I said yes, we need to be on ground, but then we need to come and establish it properly, to mm. protect our funds, to do the yeah. right thing for the by the people. But I think working together with an mm. organization that is already in place mm -hmm. is a good start. I believe in teamwork and I believe in togetherness. But the, the thing is, the, 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 the mindset of people are never what you expect it to be. So 
What I was expecting, the government will hold our funds. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing to protect it. Hold the funds. And uh, because I'm meant to be there anyway, and we can sit down and have a dialogue together with this other organization and make sure that the people that are, you cannot make a decision about someone that is blind when the person is not there. Because you're not blind. You can't make decision for me because you're not blind. You don't know what I'm going through. You don't put me in the mean screen school when you don't know the day to day steps I'm taking. So to make decisions over such people, you need everybody on ground to sit together and talk. Before you give out the phones, you need to know what they want and how the previous one was used. There should be audits. There should be things sent to these people every year before they give them another grant. They should prove what they've done with the first one and not bring in their own people, but people that is not associated with that they've already helped should come down. So I think the government should hold the grant until everybody comes on ground and a time where the platform is set for everyone to sit down and talk so that then the laws will be put in place because I believe that's one of the things they should be talking about as well, putting the inclusion in place so that it will be accessible for everyone. Children with abundance will go to school. They will not just be holding paper when you want them to demonstrate. That's, that's you uh, uh, um, uh, defiling them, putting them in the street when you need them to demonstrate, when they're yeah. not getting the rights to what is given to them by you. I feel that hurts me because I have two children like that, and I would not let nobody do that to my children. So the government should hold the phones. That's what I believe until we find time you and the other group, we all come together and we sit down and we talk about it, where the rights will be observed and things will be put in place properly for them. The reason why the inclusion is not happening, people are just so about the money. And when they take the money, they do what they want to do. They come back next year for another money. They forget that there are greater things than the money. Yeah. And that's what I believe. Mm. All right. J just before we, 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 we wrap on this one, let me just share this one for with our listening audience. Uh, just in case you want to follow up, is at www.africaw, that's one word, africaw.com. And it says here, major problems facing abinos in Africa. I just want to share with you a little bit of it. Africa is the worst place to be an abino. In the land where crazy, suspic suspicious beliefs and ignorance reign supreme. Abinos can only pray and run. Yes, Abinos run all day and night. Abinos are running, but not from wild animals. Abinos mm. are running, but not from some strange creatures from other space. Abinos are running away from fellow human beings. Abinos are running away from the lack of compassion and love. Abinos are running away from the sheer stupidity and weakness of fellow human beings. Mm -hmm. Abinos continue to run all day and night for the heart of man is this desperately wicked. As most of you know, Abinosim is the lack of melanin and a pigment in the skin, eyes and hair, which protects us from the sun's ultraviolet rays. And let me go further, it says here, um, let me see, let me see. There's some huge challenges in some African countries, actually. Um, and let me just share with you, okay. In Tanzania, which doctors are busy spreading this false belief that expensive concussions made from albino limbs, genitals, hair, skin, etc., bring good luck. This has led to many albinos being murdered just for their miraculous body parts. In other words, albinos are hunted by albinos hunters, murderers. This all right, I think um, you don't want to go deeper. Let me leave that all the word there. In other in other places like Zimbabwe, it is believed that having sex with an albino curses each curses HIV and AIDS. That may occur, it cures the HIV and yeah. AIDS completely. Yeah. This crazy suspicious belief has led to the rape of several innocent albino men and women. In other words, poor innocent Abino people are being infected with the deadly HIV AIDS, all because of this crazy suspicious belief that 
sleeping with albinos can cure HIV and AIDS. And the sad thing is that Robert Mugabe at the time and his cabinet are doing absolutely nothing about this extremely terrible situation. Let's hope now that this uh, and it's the current government, that, you know, as you know, uh, campaigners we continue we, we raise the issue. We, we, we put measures together to actually uh, protect uh, persons who have been in, in that part of the world. But honestly, I've been following development in uh, in Tanzania like you do as well, and uh, Zimbabwe, Nigeria as well. I mean, the situation there are grave. Sometimes some description when you see some of the pictures. Uh, I remember mm -hmm. some guys were sending me the pictures. I, I can't believe what how we human being treat another uh, person like that. But just before we wrap up, Dr. To, um, if you want to respond to some of these, then you can respond. But at the same time, as far as the support of your initiative is concerned, your organization is concerned, how do people support you? What sort of support do you want from maybe those of us that are listening to you right now? Well, I'll make it broad in life. Um, the government says, the way every government says that they, you need an address to register your, um, your, your, your business. And that's the struggle I've been having with the Liberian government because I'm saying to them, I can't be single-handedly doing things from London and you're still telling me to rent a, 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 a place to say before I can register the business. Maybe they need to look into that again. And I know there's a lot of NGOs on the floor, but what we want is the office space right now so that my, my girls and then those on the ground will be able to go and register this business because I've paid too much on the table money, to be fair. And in Ghana, I didn't have to do none of those. And the other places that I'm doing, what well, I didn't have to. And sometimes it kills the spirit, you know. But like you said, when we're doing the humanitarian work, we come back down because it is not about the money and the fame. It's the passion of what you're doing, like what you just read. I get those updates every day, and I get the ones that they amputate the babies, cut them into pieces. I've seen worse, and I can't sleep sometimes. And I even get the ones that the sun burn has given them cancer that is eating into their skin. They are alive, but the cancer is eating them. Hospitals can't take care of that until you send about 1,000 pounds, or I send 800 pounds, or I send 20 pounds. It, where are you going to get the money from? So when the NGO is established in Liberia, I can be able to do something. Everything I send from now, I'm paying SS luggages, I'm paying this, I'm paying that. We need to be able to see genuine things and uh, adult endorse it and take care of it. So I'm feeling this. We, we're doing everything we can, but we need an office space. And if office space is going to cost me 700 US dollars, it will not help me take care of my, my, my persons who have been with it. I call in my family because I have two, and it's personal. This is no financial gain. This is personal. I, Max, you know me. I don't have a big car in London. I don't live in a big, massive house. Because if I can afford those things, I'd rather give the money to those in Liberia to sort out the persons who have been with it. And those I have on ground, they're really good. They've gone to the length to do everything they can. These girls are working hard. Utah is working from America. It's like nobody's just listening and it's just hard for them, you know. So if someone can please, I'm pleading, help us with our office space so we can register our business. I will rent it, but give it to us on the rate that I can afford to do it for the time being until we get our documentation sorted. And then I can be able to do the right things by them, get them into a nice nursery, build the things we want to do. But until we get that registration, I cannot get the right funds that I need from here where I am to support them back home. So please, I'm pleading that someone out there is listening and help me get an office space. And if mm -hmm. you want to um, get in contact with me, get in contact with Max, and Max is going to let me know. And the information of who you will contact, he will give you the person's name. He knows them already, so he will help me out on that level. And thank you so much for whoever's going to do that in advance. Yeah, okay. God will bless them as well. That's a two. Just before we go, um, I mean, we you you've been very busy the the, the past month and this gone last gone weekend was a uh, was a big program. What was it? Uh, what was it all about? <laughs> uh, we we had a women worship gospel music award. That's a vision that God gave me five years ago. And sometimes you know you have to be, like I said, we write it down, and on the set time it will come to pass. And so this year was the year for Women Worship Gospel Music Award to happen. It is women doing extraordinary things that are missing in society that people don't know about, that have never heard about. 
because you have a wide mainstream of women that people are hearing about. And these same people are achieving the same thing over and over. And they're in public are being praised all the time and suppressing the others that are doing things beneath and nobody is searching. So women worship went deeper. We searched deeper for women that are in the gospel industry, but they are doing their music, they're doing their songs, they're going to church on Sunday, they're wise, they're putting to work, but they're able to go to the studio, produce songs that are impacting lives. And they're also having charities in Africa, dealing with widows, dealing with uh, orphanages, building big, big places, single-handedly, all with their pastor's husband. And we thought, nobody will say thank you because they believe that that's what um, children of God is supposed to do in the first place. But people in the world are celebrating themselves. They say, thank you for the work you've done. And it gives them some a glamorous night where they come together, a gala where they celebrate. So I thought to God, how do I bring women in one room to celebrate each other and give them something? Initially, I was thinking about maybe just putting presents in the bag and then with flowers and give to every single woman that came. Yeah. But then I had this dream, and, I was, and the Lord said, when you give people physical things that they eat, they eat it, and at the end of the day, they forget. Remember, people do forget what you do for them. But if you give them something solid that they will look at and say, this is the work I've done, therefore I achieved this, they will go forth and do more without the fame and without looking at the wall, but mm. they're doing it. So that's what we did this Saturday gone. We, we are honor women that have been doing great things. And we acknowledge upcoming gospel artists. And we build sisterhood in love and worship. And it was just beautiful. I didn't expect the turn up. I, I think I limited God. But the place was so full that the hall could not contain the wow. people. And wow. then the, 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 the owners of the hall were like, next time you're doing a program like this, get your numbers right. Get your numbers right. But I thank God. He did what he wanted to do. Yeah. And no man could stop that. And I'm very grateful as I'm speaking with you, I still have four and uh, three more visitors still in my house. Two left this morning to the USA. I still have those from Belgium and outside of London still around. So I'm still doing the running and errands. That's what the calls are coming in because I'm still catering to the needs of the people that came. But the fact that they came from America, Belgium, anywhere that I didn't ex well, we expected because God said the vision would be big, but the, the response was so glorious. And I just want to thank all those women again live and say, Thank you, Master, for giving me the opportunity to do this. I appreciate all of you. Those that could not make it, we thank you for not making it either because you're part of not making it, make it successful as well. Either way, I'm sure you were thinking about us wherever you were in your houses. And thank you, Master, for always supporting and promoting the Liberian community. Yeah. We appreciate you for that. And thank everyone for the vision is right. And get ready for 2019. If the first official launch was like this, I can't wait to see what 19 is going to look like. Thank you so much. All right, hold on. Yeah, don't go yet. Uh, of course, uh, coming on this afternoon or this evening, uh, that will be UK 10 o'clock time, I'll be hosting uh, the former president of the Union of Liberian Associations in the Americas, uh, Mr. Imamia Witty, who is also spearheading the dual citizenship uh, you know, uh, project or a consultation with the Librarian government. He will be my studio guest this evening. If you have the time, you can also uh, join in. We're going to have a fascinating, fascinating discussion with Mr. Uh, Witty. We have a whole lot on the table to cover, as you know, the political uh, situation in our life, in our country. But just before we let you go, um, anything final you want to share with us, especially uh, with respect to the uh, initiative you just shared with us, uh, I know you mentioned uh, a lot of people came, uh, on fire. All of, most of the people came from uh, just um, uh, here in the diaspora. Next next time, are you hoping to extend maybe across the sea? How is, what, what, what is your anticipation for next year? You mean women worship? Yeah. The gospel. Oh, oh yeah, and then it's international. So I extend the day. But you know, Max, the funny thing is, um, we have Liberian bloggers, and it says, they only promote people that they think is good and is what they want to do. I know when I want to talk and then um, boss media will say, don't say nothing, leave them to say. But we promote what is good and we promote what is bad because either way we are getting publicity either way. When we started, our Liberian people will not share the good thing you're doing. They will not speak of it. You will get the Nigerians and the Ghanaians supporting you. Our own people don't do it. I actually sent out the, a press release and all the Liberian people were on the platform and they saw it. It's international and UK, like European and that's, it's, it's worldwide, it's globally. 
people came from all over, but they were not Liberians. The two Liberians that came from America was Pastor Allen and Dr. Julian Khan that came from America to embrace the occasion. And they were so powerful because you had your own people on the high table for once, celebrating with you that are doing great things in the community. Now the gospel artists that are, uh, are sending, uh, they never came. Bernice Blackie uh, was nominated. She couldn't come out on the stand. And another lady called Sienna Barclay. And they both won. International and UK and We help each other. That's what we are like in our community. Even the ones in London, that to be fair with you, did not support me that way either. We are not looking for fame. We are doing something. The library is not on the map. And people are trying to do something, celebrate the positive and leave the negative. Because if the positive voices are more than the negative voices, we will override the evil. But they say where, where the good people are quiet, evil reign. And when evil is raining, don't complain. It's because you kept quiet. When you were supposed to help. You were running your own business. And you forget that after all, I'll come back. And I think we need to learn to embrace each other, network more in our community, and support each other to get together and do the right in our community. And then we can compare ourselves to the Nigerian life of the government. We need to love ourselves first and let the same life be run up in a positive way. There are bad days, there are always been bad, but let's look at the positive. Those that are doing good things, promote it, put them in your, on your pages and stuff. It will not take away your name or your fame. It will only support your cause, and people will say Liberians are doing great things in the diaspora as well, not only in Liberia itself. Yeah. So much. All right. Um... Anything you want to share with your audience that are listening or watching watching you live right now? Finally, uh, from my end, we just want to say thanks for accepting our invitation once again. Uh, anything finally? No, thank everyone for the support. And we Liberia, we're going all the way. We are the Bible. Our song, our national anthem, says, "We're the land of freedom, liberty, and justice." And that's who we are. No other country has that anthem. And our flag is even unique in itself. People marvel when they see the flag and I carry it around. Please, please, I'm begging all of us to come together, support and network and push ourselves in the forefront. And thank you for supporting me. Thank you for supporting Max. And love my mother, love my friends, anyone that has been supporting me. Those that have to love you anyway. And thank you all for listening. We'll see you soon. All right, <laughs> thank Dr. You, Dr. Tu, thank you so much. And, uh... Thank you for uh, the hard work as well. Let me extend it on behalf of those that are also extending thanks to you. Thank you for the hard work and thanks for our people, especially that community, the community of uh, uh, persons with abilities in Liberia. Let's hope that uh, we all will be uh, aware of the situation and be able to come and help in. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your bank holiday. I'm sleeping today. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah. Bye-bye. So okay, let's continue with our song here. I will worship uh, by Dr. Toru. Thanks to our wonderful studio guest, Dr. Precious Dog. And thanks to her for all the good work. And thanks to you also uh, for watching. Your invitation uh, to join me later this evening as well. I'm going to be here this evening and of course on the Max K talk show. And our studio guest will be the former head of the of, of EULA, that's the Union of uh, Liberian Associations in the Americas. Uh, the, he will be here. We, he will be here. We'll be talking about EULA. We'll be talking about uh, Liberia. We'll be talking about everything. So join us. Our guest set for the program this evening it will be 10 o'clock uh, UK time. That will be 9 o'clock in Liberia. From my end, 
God bless you. And of course, God bless the continent of Africa and God bless Mama Liberia. Bye-bye for now. Bye.